In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Welcome to our Mass from St. Patrick's Churchill for Thursday in the 13th week. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you are the image of the unseen God, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are the firstborn of all creation, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are the head of the body, the church, Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. My almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Amos. Emmet Zion, the priest of Bethel, sent word to Jeroboam, king of Israel, as follows. Amos is plotting against you in the heart of the house of Israel. The country can no longer tolerate what he keeps saying. For this is what he says. Jeroboam is going to die by the sword and Israel go into exile far from its country. To Amos, Emmet Zaya said, Go away, Seir. Get back to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there. Do your prophesying there. We want no more prophesying in Bethel. This is the royal sanctuary, the national temple. I was no prophet, neither did I belong to any of the brotherhood of prophets, Amos replied to Emmet Zaya. I was a shepherd and looked after sycamores, but it was the Lord who took me from herding the flock, and the Lord who said, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. So listen to the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy against Israel. Utter no oracles against the house of Isaac. Very well, this is what the Lord says. Your wife will be forced to go on the streets. Your sons and daughters will fall by the sword. Your land will be parceled out by measuring line and you yourself die on unclean soil. Israel will go into exile far distant from its own land. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The judgments of the Lord are true and all of them just. The law of the Lord is perfect, it revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted, it gives wisdom to the simple. The judgments of the law are true and all of them just. The precepts of the Lord are right, they gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, it gives light to the eyes. The judgments of the Lord are true and all of them just. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. 
the just peace of the Lord, Lord of the They are more to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold, and sweeter are they than honey, than honey from the comb. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them just. We welcome our gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. God was in Christ to reconcile the world to himself, and the good news of reconciliation he has entrusted to us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Good News according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus got back in the boat, crossed the water, and came to his own town. Then some people appeared, bringing him a paralytic stretched out on a bed. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Courage, my child, your sins are forgiven. And at this the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Knowing what was in their minds, Jesus said, Why do you have such wicked thoughts in your hearts? Now which of these is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk? But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, Get up, pick up your bed and go off home. And the man got up and went home. A feeling of awe came over the crowd when they saw this, and they praised God for giving such power to men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes when the TV networks are promoting a movie that they're scheduled to show, they might describe a movie as being action-packed. And that generally means lots of fistfights, plenty of shooting and endless car chases. There are, of course, none of those things in our Gospel passage today, but nevertheless, it could well be described as action-packed. There's a lot happening. First of all, we meet a paralysed man and his extraordinary friends. His friends want to do anything they can to get him cured. So they pick up his bed and they carry him along to Jesus. In the story too, there's the continuing confrontation between Jesus and the Jewish religious leaders. The scribes who are present are outraged by Jesus' blasphemy in claiming to be able to forgive sins, something they say only God can do. Then there's the actual cure of the paralytic. The paralysed man picks up his stretcher and walks off unaided. And finally, there's the reaction of the crowd. We're told that the crowd was overcome by awe at what had happened, and they thanked God for what they had witnessed that day. When Jesus first sees the paralytic, the first thing he says to him is, Courage, my child, your sins are forgiven. Maybe this threw the paralytic a bit. Maybe it wasn't exactly what he was wanting to hear or expecting to hear. He'd gone there to get cured. He'd heard that Jesus was good at that sort of thing. In the end, of course, he gets a two-for-one deal, the forgiveness of his sins and the cure of his sickness. Our reading today invites us to give thanks for Jesus' presence in our lives and for the opportunity we have to meet him each day in the Eucharist, in prayer and in all our brothers and sisters.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name. For our good and for the Lord's the Church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father, of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks 
that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may become co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us ask our Father to forgive us our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. By this divine sacrifice we have offered and received, fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace. Thanks.